Hey, welcome to Adex World and another video in the IGCAC Accounting Series. Firstly, I would like to wish every one of you a very happy and prosperous New Year 2021. The year 2020 was a bad year for many of you. The schools were shut. You were not able to complete your studies. I hope the year 2021 is good for you. You do well in your exams. The exams are conducted properly. Let's hope for the best. So coming back to IGCAC counting, all the topics in the syllabus have already been covered. You will find the videos in the IGCAC counting playlist. I will also give you the link in the description box below. And I've also covered some examples on selected topics. So this video is a continuation of that. And the topics that I'm going to cover today are accruals and prepayments, or some of you may call it other incomes and expenses, or you may also call it year end adjustments. And the provision for doubtful debts chapter. The explanation videos to all these topics, I will be giving the link in the description box. If you've not watched them first, if you have doubts in these chapters, please watch them and then come back and try to solve this example. So the question that I have for you is the following balances were taken from the books of Kareem on 1st Jan 2020. Opening balances are given for insurance, rent received and sundry debtors. Then transactions during the year are given. For rent received, there are two transactions. Insurance premium paid is one transaction. At the end of the year, then debtors balances are given 170,000. Some irrecoverable debts are given. Okay. Then the provision for doubtful debts information is given 5%. Fine. And the question wants us to prepare four accounts insurance, rent received, bad debts, and provision for doubtful debts. So when preparing the insurance account, let's read all the information that we have for the insurance account and then put that information in the account. The balance on 1st Jan was 100 and, sorry, 1,400 prepaid. A prepaid balance for an expense, insurance expense would be a current asset for the business in the previous year, meaning the insurance account would have a debit balance. All prepaid expenses have debit balances. So in the insurance account debit side, I will start by writing on Jan 1, balance brought down 1,400. Going ahead, during the year, transaction for insurance is on 31st March. Insurance premium paid for 15 months, $3,000. You know that any payment would be recorded on the debit side of the expense account. So on the debit side, March 31, let's say bank, assuming that the amount is paid by check, $3,000. If the question doesn't specify what is the mode of payment, you could write either cash or bank. It's fine. No other information is available for insurance, but using this, we need to find out two things now. What is the closing balance on 31st December and how much amount has to be transferred to the income statement? If we get any one of these amounts, the other one would be the balancing figure in the account. It's obvious. So using the information that insurance premium paid for 15 months was 3000, can I find the Closing balance on 31st December, yes. If I find what is the prepaid insurance on 31st December. In other words, if I find out how much insurance premium has been paid in advance for the next year, that would become my closing balance on 31st December. So calculations is simple. 3000 is paid for 15 months. So that makes it 3000 divided by 15, insurance premium of 200 per month. Now you have to see how many months are paid in advance. See insurance premium, if it is paid for 15 months on 31st March, it means it, the policy began on 1st April and from 1st April, if you count 15 months, it goes on to 30th June in the next year in 2021. So you have to see how many months are paid in advance. So the number of months beyond December 2020 would be six months from Jan to June 2021. And hence six months insurance is paid in advance. So 200 into six, $1,200 will be the prepaid insurance on 31st December. This would be the closing balance in the insurance account. Again, a debit balance. So the balance carried down would come on the credit side as December 31 balance carried down $1,200, 200 into six. I told you the balancing figure in the account can be transferred to the income statement as insurance expense for the period. So on the debit side, let me take a total of 4,400 
copying the same total on the other side 4400 and December 31 I would transfer to the income statement the 4400 minus 1200 3200 so this would be the insurance expense for the period and you also need to bring down the closing balances so in 2021 Jan 1 balance brought down $1,200. I hope the insurance expense was clear. Let's directly go on to the rent received account. So the information that we have for rent received on 1st Jan that it was accrued. The tenant had not yet paid Kareem. Accrued income is also an asset. Asset will have debit balance. So in the rent received account on the debit side, Jan 1 balance brought down $8,600. On Jan 31, rent was received $12,900. On October 31, again rent was received $17,200. Let's record these two receipts in the rent received account, obviously on the credit side, 2020. Jan 31, again I will be using bank, $12,900 amount. And on October 31, again bank, $17,200. So again, there are two more transactions left in the account. One is the closing balance and then the transfer to the income statement. If you are able to find out any of these, the other one would be the balancing figure in this account. So how do we find out the closing balance or the transfer to income statement? See, first let us find out what is the rent per month. If I divide 12,900 by 6, what I get is 2150 which means 2150 is rent per month let me also do it for the october 31 receipt 17200 divided by 8 is again 2150 which means monthly rent is 2150 if we, if i can multiply the 2150 monthly rent by 12 months what i will get is the annual rent and that annual rent can be easily transferred to the income statement at the end of the year so let me do that on December 31, income statement, 2150 into 12 will give you 25,800. Now the only thing left in the account is the closing balance. So let me take a total on the debit side because the debit side is greater than the credit side. If I take a total on the debit side. I would get here 34,400 copying this total again on the other side 34,400 so on December 31 the balance left in the account would be 34,400 minus the total of 12,900 and 17,200 which is 30,100 so the balance I get is 4,300 and in the next year again I have to first bring down the balance of 4,300. 4,300 is the accrued rent at the end of 2020. Again, a current asset in the balance sheet. You will show it under current assets. I hope it's very clear how to prepare one, the expense account, which we've seen for insurance and then the income account, which we've seen for a rent received account. Okay, let's go ahead and now prepare the bad debts account and the provision for doubtful debts account. So the bad debts transaction, which I can figure out from the question is where the amount of Sunil had to be written off from his account. So bad debts entry is bad debts debit, the customer or Sunil here credit. So on the debit side, 2020, the transaction would be here on 31st December, end of the year. I will say Sunil as 120. What do you do with the bad debts account at the end of the year? Obviously all incomes and expenses you have to transfer to the income statement. So taking a total of the bad debts account 120 and the entire amount will be transferred to the income statement as expense for the year. And that completes our bad debts account. And then we have the provision for doubtful debts account. If we try to read the information, the, it says that Kari maintains a provision for doubtful debts of 5% of debtors at the end of each year. 
Opening balance in the provision for doubtful debts is not directly given, but yes, Kareem maintains it every year. So you must be having some provision for doubtful debts at the beginning of the year. We need to calculate that. The rate is 5% every year and I know that the opening debtors given in the question is $135,000. So $135,000 into 5%. When we do that, we get $6,750. So opening balance in the provision for doubtful debts on the credit side, 2020, Jan 1, balance brought down, 6750 I also need to find out the closing balance in the provision for doubtful debts account because after that I will be able to calculate how much is the transfer to income statement. The closing debtors given are 170,000. But the problem is out of this 170,000, 120 which was recoverable from Sunil is not recoverable anymore. Hence we cannot provide a provision for doubtful debt on that bad debt amount. We've already written off that as bad debts for the year. So we need to deduct that 120. When we do that, we get the net balance as 169,880. On this, we will apply 5% and calculate the closing balance. So we get a closing balance of dollars 8,494 in the account on December 31. So we will have balance carried down as 8,494. Once we have the opening balance and the closing balance, and if you watched my videos on provision for outflow lets, you should know that after this, the next step is to balance the account and put the difference in the income statement. So what I'll do is I'll take a total here on the debit side, the debit side being greater, 8,494. On the credit side, December 31, income statement. The difference, 8,494 minus 6,750. We get 1744. This will this is this is the amount that would be transferred to the income statement as expense for the year under provision for doubtful debts. And in 2021, I need to bring down the balance. Jan 1. Balance brought down 8494. I hope this example was clear and these two topics are also better now. You might be having some doubts that might have got cleared after watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, please like the video, please share the video with your friends. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Many more videos will be coming up in the future. Thank you for being there.